Now, knowing when to add the carbohydrates back in is key. We want to add carbohydrates back in when insulin is sensitive, not when insulin is resistant. In this ketogenic plan, we've made insulin relatively sensitive, so it's going to be hungry for carbohydrates to put them anywhere they can. What we want to do is choose specific places to put the carbohydrates in. So first and foremost, we want to put carbohydrates in earlier in the morning. So if we have a patient who's not active, not exercising, and we add the first carbohydrate back in in the first week, we put the carbohydrate in the morning when the patient is the most insulin sensitive. However, in certain populations, when the patient is active, when they're exercising, there will be greater insulin sensitivity around their workout. So we forget about adding carbohydrates in in the morning. The first week we add carbohydrates in around the workout because the insulin sensitivity is greater around the workout than it is in the morning. So again, first week we add the carbohydrates back in. If it's an inactive patient, we put them in in the morning. If it's an active patient, we put the carbohydrates in around their workout. Now, talking about the active patient. Certain types of activity are better for this transition. When we do sort of a steady state intermediate type of aerobic activity, what I like to call medium intensity steady state, the letter spell M-I-S-S, -S, and it's what it sounds like, it's a miss. So we want to shift them into something called high intensity interval training. As the letter suggests, H-I-I-T, that is a hit. And I don't know about you, I'd rather have hit than miss. When we incorporate high intensity interval training, you get greater levels of ins insulin sensitivity, greater levels of fat loss, greater levels of muscle growth, easier transition from a ketogenic plan to a modified Mediterranean plan.